Hi again, this is Barbara's Kitchen and I'm still in California and it would not be complete until I show you guys about carne asada burrito or the California burrito. I actually went down to San Diego to my favorite burrito place, Aldoberto's, and I interviewed the manager there, Daniel. He walked me through and told me some good tips on how they do their carne asada burrito. So first of all, you use flank or skirt. This was actually carne asada meat, which means beef. So he actually said, you've got to do it very, very thin. Even when it looks thin, still, I'm going to attempt to slice even thinner this carne asada meat the way theirs is, super, super thin. And after you do that to your best of your ability, get it as sliced as thin as possible, you take a wooden hammer and you pound it even thinner. And after that, we're going to show you, my son's gonna join me and he's gonna show you some cool tips on what is called the California burrito, which has fries in it. Hey, what we're doing here is the pico de gallo. It's just trying to get even chunks, as close as you can get, even chunks. You don't want a giant piece of tomato and a little piece of onion. Um, cilantro is a little different, just dice that sucker up as best as possible. But when you got this, this, this just keeps you from then having to go back through and chopping it it's, and you're holding it all together and you know, pull out some of this stuff, but it tastes good most of the time. But, but they always say you eat, eat with your eyes first. So, but let's see, how does that look? Pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. So my son is in the kitchen again after making that pico. He is preparing the rest of this carne asada. And what Daniel told me was that you want to get it as thin as possible, pound it with that wooden hammer, which I did earlier, and then say what you're doing, Josh. Salting the meat. So anytime you have meat, Meat needs flavor, and salt, you know, activates that, you know, helps uh, bring out some of the natural flavors of this stuff. But if I was to cook this salt right now, if I salt it and throw it in, you lose 30% of any seasoning inside the cooking, whatever you're doing, grill, skillet, whatever. But salt is very is a very good. You salt and then you let, basically let rest. And what happens is the moisture of the meat breaks down the salt and then the meat itself will, will pull the salt into, you know, into it. You know, and then you, I may, it may be a little saltier than normal, but what you're trying to do is you have a lot of other good flavors. If you got avocado, it's very rich, right? So. You have some other flavors that you need this meat to really shine really pop out so you may put a little bit more salt than you would typically put on you know say a steak or whatever because a steak you're just one bite and it's perfect well this this meat needs to kind of pop out against all the other flavors that you're adding to it you know so like you got some good cheese some sour creams guacamole some pico de gallo all that this meat will may just get buried in that so Mm -hmm. So chop, dice real small, I'm going through, and then as much time as you can get this salt on there, um, and then chop, and then you can put it in the fridge, and it's just, you know, 20 minutes maybe, you know, but as, the longer you let it set, you know, rest, just like any, doing a dough or anything, you know, you, you know, do it the night before, get it ready, but, you know, it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes to kind of draw some of that salt into it so you don't lose it um, when you cook. Okay, that's cool. So Josh, show them uh, Alcoberto's uh, carne asada burritos was diced really, really fine and he it was chopped. It wasn't in it wasn't in strips. So I asked him, he goes, No, ours is chopped. So I'm gonna have Josh just show you very fine. So what we're doing you know, you always try to, I mean, if you were to slice every single one of these, you know, um, one at a time, 
you know, slice it in half, double stack it. You know, if you go triple stack, it's going to get a little whatever. And then you're going to take this, you know, get it roughly the same size, you know, and then you slice it in the strips, just like anything else. Once you slice that in the strips, then you can come back and dice it the other way, you know, but I'm stacking it up so that I'm doing, that's one cut, cutting two pieces of meat versus, you know, over and over. So try to do this, try to save as much time as you can. You know, it, it, you know the goal is to make cooking fun and not just this big, you know, labor intensive thing. So if you can make a little shortcut here, a little shortcut there, you know, that's what you always want to do. And so I'm doing, you know, a quarter inch, whatever, and then you just rotate it. And then I'm going back and dicing it the other way. So you should see that these just break apart and these little mm -hmm. pieces of meat. That's looking good. That looks like Alberto's. I'm excited. <laughs> at any time I've made it at home myself, it's never tasted like what you get here locally in Southern California. Um, it's because they're not doing a true carne asada, adding that all those spices that you'll find. And it's just salting and letting, letting the other elements bring those flavors to it. You know, a, squash, uh, a squeeze of fresh lime, you know, bringing some of that acidity, salt, fat. Those are the three major things that you're looking for in every bite. Okay, during this time, I usually give a food for thought, which is um, today is going to be obviously about salt. Um, Daniel, the manager, said all he does is salt that meat that adds the flavor. He says you got to add salt because it adds flavor. And we all know what salt does. Josh elaborated on it. And so what I'm going to read is this beautiful, it's Matthew, it's taken from Matthew 5, 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned again, I guess. So what that means to me, since we're talking about salt, of course, Jesus said this about his people, uh, born again disciples. We are that salt and he wants us to be salty. It adds flavor, it adds, you can call it blessings to ourselves, blessings to others, and he didn't say be it, he said you are, you are the salt of the earth. And he also tells us, don't lose your flavor, don't lose your flavor, because if that meat did not have salt on it, we'd go, yuck, who wants this? So our lives also are to be seasoned with God's salt, and we are to be the salt of the earth. So, cool. Okay, we're going to try this wok here. I've got a butane little stove here. Uh, butane is incredible as far as the amount of heat it puts out. And just like anything else, you want to really sear that meat as much as possible. And then we're going to add um, some fat to this mix. What do you got, Mom? Okay, this is uh, this is one of my favorite. It's Cal California <laughs> garlic infused olive oil. So I'm going to um, just, garlic's good on everything and so is olive oil. So he's, I, mean, I had him use this. Yeah, so just take a little, well, I'm going to kick this thing on. And this wok is so thin, it'll start smoking pretty quick. So just a little drizzle, we don't need much. I'm doing these in small batches. Um, and roll that sucker around. I had some uh, olive oil spray that I sprayed on here just to kind of get all the sides, but the, the main area is gonna be down there. But kick this on hot, and then just as it starts to smoke a little bit, you can see a little bit already. So that's already ready. And you just start, like I said, this yeah. is gonna be. I smell that olive, uh, I mean the garlic. I can smell the garlic. Can you Josh? It smells, yeah. It smells good. We're gonna kick, kick it up as high as possible. And this stuff is so thin, you know, and just like any beef, you know, a good steak is that, 
uh, medium, medium rare. You know, you want a little bit of pink, it holds that in. Anything past it, you know, it, it's gonna dry it out. It's gonna be like chewing rubber, you know, so. Just get it in there. Um, and while it's cooking, if you have, where's the salt? Yeah, you could, you know, just a, a, a tad a tad more salt. I mean, just a little bit, just to kind of uh, have that on the outside so it hits your tongue. Um, the uh, And then speaking of salt, we do have, this is just a Himalayan salt. Um, a lot of times, um, doc, you'll, you'll hear a doctor say, oh, we don't want to, I don't want you to be too much salt. I don't, you can't have too much salt in your diet. Well, turns out, um, after doing a little bit of research, um, they're talking about table salt. Table salt is uh, sodium chloride, and they take seawater, and it, it's the two major compounds that, that evaporate out um, that crystallize. And so when you get table salt, it has, has um, kind of do lecture and cook at the same time. But it only has two minerals. Sodium chloride. Um, your body has 92 minerals in it. Seawater has 92 minerals in it. And Himalayan salt actually has 82 minerals. Um, so find a good good salt that's got enough minerals that you're adding, actually adding that back to your body. Um, because when you get table salt, uh, sodium chloride is just, it is just sodium. And so, and, uh, and some chloride. Almost, almost there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just almost like a uh, stir fry. They use this lot for a lot of different things, so uh, that's cool. You don't have to have a grill. Yep, and you can you can always go a little bit early because it's going to finish cooking in the uh, in the side over there. Mom's going to take over um, with that. Um, now, carne asada is what Mom's making today, but you can add. Um, french fries or potato really um, to it to make it an actual California burrito. Yeah, in the air fryer it's key to move that sucker around. Um, usually if you see me touching stuff I have a dirty hand and a clean hand. This doesn't ever touch like meat and stuff uh, or salt so if I'm grabbing with my right that's always my clean hand with my yeah. knife and mm -hmm. this will be slicing meat and different stuff so I always try to do that. A lot of times just put some gloves on I had some, but I, I ran out from all the barbecue and stuff I've been doing. But again, pinch of salt, and when it's in the air fryer, just keep those moving. This is, I tasted that carne asada. It is right on. Okay, we are ready. Joshua is going to do the tortillas. And then I'm going to show you a quick video of how I took them. Of course, they were super fast on rolling those burritos, carne asada burritos. So I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to go just as fast, maybe. <laughs> yeah, just trying to brown it a little bit. I just did some olive oil, you know. Whoop. Okay, Let's there they cool. go. Let it cool. So my favorite was carne, I always order carne asada. They take this meat, they go across, of course, faster than what I'm going. That's probably enough meat, don't you think? And I like guacamole. So they put on the guacamole, probably enough. Pico. That's enough. Cheese. A little bit more cheese, cheesy, cheesy, cheesy. And I like sour cream on mine. Squirt some sour cream on there. Oh. Now, this is what they do. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> he started like this, rolled it. Of course, he's so fast. I see how you fold well, that burrito. Wow, that's awesome. Go over, then continue the row. Hey, I'm doing it. Whoa. <laughs> now, they Good usually roll. cut it in half for you. And voila. Yummy. It looks just like theirs. Tastes good. 
Yep, we got another one on there. So. I'm going to go ahead and taste it, Josh. I All can't right. wait. Here it goes. I'm going to see if it tastes like theirs. Mmm. Am I an Alberto? We had a mom made um, a burrito. You can see the, the, I mean, it's a little tiny. That's more like a uh, taquito. <laughs> that's, that's like my style. I'm adding some more meat, some more cheese, you know, because we want, when you go there, man, those suckers are, try to like three bites across, you know. And so then we, we have to, enough that we got to shake this thing in the submission. I always, the way I do it, I start out folding that sucker, you know, and then you just get mm -hmm. that sucker in there. You roll it. Whoa, that is a man. <laughs> man. Yeah, and I need a bread cutter for that bad cat. <laughs> All right, ready for the close-up? <laughs> Bring that bad cat. Oh, yeah. What do you think, Dad? Hey, Here. hey, which one? <laughs> which one are you wanting? Uh, this is the brand he uses, and it tastes authentic. It's awesome. So having said that, I want to always say thank you for watching, have a blessed day, and be sure to subscribe. Yeah, be sure to subscribe. <laughs> so see you later. Uh, like and subscribe. <laughs>